Hi, welcome to SBS Sports Picks. I'm Peter Loshak. Today is uh, Wednesday, June 9th, and we are talking with Ian Cameron. We're taking a look at the uh, opening lines for the baseball card for tomorrow, uh, Thursday, June 9th. Uh, Ian Cameron, very short card tomorrow, but I've still identified three games that I think might have some value. The first one is uh, the early game, Houston at, at Texas. Uh, you know, Texas, of course, has been by far the most profitable team uh, in all of baseball to date, and particularly so at home. I think their ROI at home is approaching almost 50%, if you can believe that, uh, as of right now. And then uh, Houston has been also notably bad uh, on the road. Uh, you know, the starting pitching, uh, both McHugh and Perez are pretty vulnerable, uh, so I, I figure that's roughly a wash. Uh, the line is relatively low, very low, actually, uh, on the opening. The, the pinnacle opener is minus 113. Why would we not, once again, go back to the well with Texas at home at just minus minus 113 tomorrow against Houston. Yeah, I can't bet Houston in this ballpark. It really is plain and simple as that for me because you just look at what the Houston Astros have done. Uh, this has become a nightmare, a horror show pitch uh, playing really in Arlington. I mean, this is a team that has just not been able to at all put together a winning formula of any kind uh, against the Texas Rangers. Texas Rangers, uh, when you look at it, they've won uh, eight straight games head-to-head -head, uh, against the Houston Astros. Houston's got a long-term track record of futility in this ballpark, 14-43. and 43. Last 57 meetings here in Arlington between these two teams. Houston's just uh, not gotten the job done against this Texas Rangers team. It's almost to the point where I think it's in their minds, it's in their heads a little bit, that we just can't beat the Texas Rangers, mm -hmm. especially here uh, in Arlington. And when I see the quotes that I'm seeing from Houston that, you know, just – speak to that, that really this is in their heads, the fact that they've just struggled so much in Texas. I want no part of them, especially Colin McHugh. I mean, you got to give me a better pitcher than that to support Houston with uh, in, a, in a ballpark where it's been just impossible uh, for them to get right. victories. Or you got to give me plus 160. Yeah, I mean, and it's, you know, I'm not a big Martin Perez fan. Let's get that out of the way first as well. I mean, Martin Perez, a 3.24 ERA this season, but you look at his advanced metrics, they're both way higher than that, his FIP and his ex-FIP. You know, his walks per nine innings, almost at four, uh, and his strikeouts per nine innings, barely above five. So numbers that don't indicate this guy should have success in the long run. Uh, so I'm not exactly high on Martin Perez in this game, uh, although from a side perspective, I, I would have to lean Texas just because of the price where it's at, the value where it's sitting at. Texas has been the better team all season long. Uh, they've been good at home. They've owned the Houston Astros. And let's not forget the Houston Astros bullpen has not been very good. Texas's bullpen has had issues as well, uh, but Houston's hasn't been very good either. Uh, Texas should be able to score some runs against Colin McHugh, so I would lean to Texas, but more than that, I also like this game to go over the total. Mm -hmm. Do not trust any of these guys, McHugh uh, or uh, Martin Perez. Add in the fact that you've got some combustible bullpens uh, in the latter innings, and we should have some runs scored in this game. All right, sounds good. I like that one. Then another game I'm looking at where I'm thinking about the over is uh, the Angels and the Yankees. Now, I know that uh, both lineups here, the Angels and the Yankees, are uh, you know suspect long-term. I'm not a buyer in either of those lineups long-term. But uh, it's the, the, the matchup is Nova and Chassin. Both those guys very, very hittable. Uh, the Yankee Stadium uh, ballpark can be unfriendly to right-handed pitchers. And uh, the opening total was nine. I'm thinking that might, might be worth a shot with the over. What do you think about that, Ian Cameron? Well, you've certainly got some, I guess you could say, some suspect arms to say yeah. the least in this uh, particular game. There's no question about that. You know, uh, Nova, actually, to his credit, you know, he's done a pretty decent job since being inserted here uh, into this rotation uh, for the New York Yankees. Uh, that being said, does he have a lot of staying power against an Angels lineup that's been pretty good as of late? Uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, Jolie's Chassin, on the other hand, for the LA Angels, I mean, he's uh, really a guy that I don't think has a ton of upside uh, in this Angels uh, rotation at the moment. So it's another game where, you know, you would expect to see some runs scored. Uh, however, probably prefer the first five innings, if anything, over, because mm -hmm. I really like, again, uh, the Yankee bullpen. We saw it last night, really, in the game with the Angels and Yankees. We saw a lot of runs early in that game, but we didn't see a whole lot late. So yeah. uh, I'd be more inclined to look first five over rather than the game. Okay, sounds good. Good to, good to keep in mind. And then the third game I want to ask you about is Cleveland at Seattle, Tomlin and Carnes. Uh, you know, neither Tomlin nor Carnes are like they're super lights out. Neither one of them is like the elite level of pitcher, but they both can be very good, especially when they're pitching in kind of a, uh, a pitcher-friendly park as Seattle is. Carnes is, has a good record at home. Tomlin is often really good on the road. And uh, the total opened about 8.5 minus 115 at Pinnacle. I'm thinking we maybe expect a, a, a good start from both these guys, six, seven innings, you know, 
about two runs or so, and uh, maybe the, uh, the the under is a, is a sneaky good play here. What do you think? Yeah, Nathan Carnes definitely has had a little bit of a tricky time of it uh, in his last three starts. I mean, when you look at his outings as of late, uh, Carnes 6.89 ERA in his last three starts. He's definitely uh, labored quite a bit as of late. That would be the concern with him. He does have better home numbers this year, uh, but still, the, uh, the, the, over, the numbers in current form for Nathan Carnes, not exactly that great. Josh Tomlin, on the other hand, yeah, he's come back down to earth a little bit uh, as of late for the Cleveland Indians, but still, I mean, Cleveland 9-1 and one in his 10 starts. Yeah. this year at 3.54 ERA he has been solid and this Seattle lineup they're you know they have a game where they outburst for seven runs last night you know, and then they get shut down uh, the previous game by Trevor Bauer. It's a very, very inconsistent lineup. I mean, you look at the Texas series over the weekend. You know, they only scored nine runs in those three games combined. Uh, and then before that, they had games where they got 16-run outbursts against San Diego. The point I'm making is Seattle's lineup's very erratic, very inconsistent. When they're all hitting, when the Canoes, the Cruises, the Seagers, when they're all hitting, they're a very good lineup. But too much inconsistency from them at the plate uh, would be the concern for me. Uh, when you look at where the line is here, I have a little bit more faith right now in Tomlin and Karn, so mm -hmm. it's not a bad price for me here to endorse Cleveland. Uh, the under, uh, a little bit tricky for me because Karn's not in great form coming into this start, but uh, again, uh, Seattle, I don't think they're going to hit Tomlin all that great. Carnes, on the other hand, you know, Cleveland's lineup as well has gone through some ups and some downs as of late. So uh, I didn't bet the total, but uh, I would lean under slightly more than over. So all lean right. under, but not going to get to the window with it. Okay, well, we've just covered uh, almost half of the entire slate of uh, opening lines. Is there anything else that you find interesting from the uh, short card of Thursday, June 9th? Yeah, we've got the battle of the uh, Gonzalez's, I guess you could say. We've got Gio Gonzalez taking on Miguel Gonzalez, the Nationals and the White Sox. Uh, I don't want to sound like Tommy Totals here, but here we go. I'm going to look over the total again mm -hmm. uh, in another game here between these two teams. We cashed an over the total recommendation in Gio Gonzalez's last start against Cincinnati. I got no issues looking in the same direction here. This is a struggling, reeling lefty right now that we've got on the mound for the Nationals. Gio Gonzalez has allowed 18 runs, 25 hits, five home runs in his last 15.2 innings over his last three starts. All of those flew uh, up and over the total. You know, White Sox is a lineup. They've hit better with team better team batting average against Southpaws, averaged over five runs per game this year against lefties. So this is not the optimal matchup, in my opinion, for Geo. Uh, to get a bounce back start here uh, in this game. So I'm not going to trust him to shut down the White Sox. But on the other hand, you got Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel Gonzalez, actually, his numbers aren't bad when you look at his ERA, the way he's pitched since joining the White Sox rotation. But still, I look at him as a journeyman pitcher. He's been bounced around. He was with the Orioles for a long time. Uh, he's been bounced around a little bit since then. His numbers are decent. But then you look at the FIP, you look at the XFIP both of which are higher than his ERA right now. And his lone start against Washington last year, not very good. Smacked around for six runs on nine hits and in five innings. You know, Gonzalez has not pitched more than six innings. Miguel Gonzalez, that is, hasn't pitched more than six innings yet this year. So the White Sox, and they're all of a sudden floundering bullpen, started out the year pitching so well, hasn't been good at all as of late. Uh, you're likely going to see them and see them get plenty of work here late in the game. So I think over the total of nine makes some sense there. And another game that might see some runs scored uh, is Miami and Minnesota. You've got mm. Tom Kohler against Irvin Santana there. Irvin Santana, really a mediocre pitcher uh, for Minnesota. He had some glimpses when he rejoined this rotation of pitching well, but he's really struggled, struggled to pitch deep and struggled to get with giving up some runs in his last few starts. And on the flip side, Tom Kohler doesn't have great road numbers. You know, we saw Miami and Minnesota play a pretty high scoring game last night. We might see more of the same Thursday. So overs in Minnesota and in Chicago might be worth a look here on Thursday. All right, Ian Cameron, thanks for your thoughts. As always, talk again very soon. Thanks, Peter. Enjoy the games and good luck.